So that is not a bad thing with him out of the lineup. So here's the first pitch of the ball game, and it's outside, so we get underway a little early. There's a strike. So I said a little early. That would be wrong. We get started right on time. And the one-one pitch, and Young tries to push bunt, and he bunts through it. One and two. Young hitting 267 last night. He got a base hit against Linsicum. He went one for four with a couple of strikeouts. Big breaking ball, and he got him. Check out the Giants defensively. It'll be Win, Velez, and Sherholtz. That's your outfield. There, Rowan getting a night off. Renteria, Sandoval, on the left side of the infield. Uribe Ishikawa on the right side, and Eli Whiteside. He will be doing the catching for Barry Zito tonight, making his 27th start, eight and 11, and he has whittled that ERA down consistently this second half. Been pitching some great baseball: curveball, fastball, slider, changeup. He will not make many mistakes out of the middle of the plate if he's throwing right. Here's Barmus, and Barmus takes a strike called by home plate umpire Wally Bell. Wally Bell looking for strikes, and we're always in favor of that. Yeah, we like strikes. 245 for Barmus. Two for 15 against Zito. He's got 21 home runs, 67 driven in. Yeah, two for 15 against Zito, but those two hits, both home runs. Good pitch, one and two. What Zito has consistently done is stay out of the middle of the strike zone with all of his pitches. Just outside, two balls, two strikes. Good pitch. Especially to a guy like Barmas who likes to expand his his hitting zone. He does not walk very often. One of the few Rockies that will not work counts normally. Got him. All right, our game time weather is brought to you by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. The admission free boardwalk is open daily. It is 74 degrees here at the yard. We got winds at 15 miles per hour. 51% is the humidity, and it is clear. Two strikeouts, two good curveballs for the payoff pitch. It's the All Star break is ERA 2.06. The league just hit 218 against them, and that's eight starts. Starts him off with a breaking ball for a strike. Five hits for the Rockies last night against Lincecum and Wilson. Out of play, nothing in two. To Lewitsky took an 0 for three. 90 mile an hour fastball there from Zito. That's the pair right there. The win and the save. Let's come on the left. Wilson on the right. Boy, they were good. And so was Ubaldo Jimenez. It was a well pitched game. Everybody involved last night. And that's a three strikeout see ya here in the first inning. Giants are coming up. They're into it.
Randy Lynn and then the Panda. A solo home run last night. Giants are 12 and 6 when he goes big fly. Ishikawa Aribe, sure holds seventh white side in Zito. The Rockies defensively will have Spielborg's Young and Hop at your outfield, Tulowitzki and Stewart. He'll patrol the left side of the infield with Barmas and Atkins on the right side. Todd Helton not in the lineup tonight. And your Victoria Apple will do the catching for the Rockies on the hill. Will be the right hander Jason Marquis. Marquis, 6'1, 210 pounder. 31 years old out of Staten Island, New York, in his ninth year at the big league level. These are his numbers, and they're good. 14 and 8, 347 ERA. And the first pitch to Velez is a strike at the knees. Velez hitting 280. Three home runs, 17 driven in. And he's two for seven against Marquis. Marquis. Wow. Heads up. And that ball almost hit a gentleman with his date. And she took the bat and said, This one's mine. See, we're good. They just sat down. We watched them come in. And uh, that is some kind of souvenir. And he got a little bit of a contact point in the back of his right shoulder, but we're good. Yeah. Timing in life is everything. Marquis can sink and cut the fastball. Got a good hard slider, which is a, a strikeout slider. Don't mix in a changeup, but he knows how to pitch. I mean, he can definitely get you some ground balls and get you some strikeouts. Keep you in a ball game late. Has a hard slider he has. I'm still amazed that Velez didn't at least try to get the bat back. That still blows my mind. Just, you know, make a little bit of an effort. I mean, we're from the era that guys would take their gamers home with them. Two and two, not a Eugenio Velez. And if a pitcher went into a, a guy's locker and picked up his game bat, phew, that's grounds for fighting. I mean, Velez chose that bat for a reason. You can't give it up that easy. Two balls, two strikes. And Velez out swinging. You can tell if you got a piece of it or not, but it's out number one. This broadcast is on AFN, the American Forces Network, broadcasting to the U.S. Armed Forces serving abroad and on ships at sea. They're watching around the world. We welcome you and we thank you. All outs in this game have been by way of the strikeout. Remember the Shadows are going to be a problem, and uh, we're assuming that that has had a little bit to do with four outs, four strikeouts. And there you can see the batter's eye. It's very stark in the sunlight, and there is glare. It's not easy to see. One ball and one strike to Renteria. 259 hitter with three home runs, 42 driven in. Is four for 16 in his career against Marquis. Up the middle, tried to kick at it. Behind the bag is Tulowitzki in an off balance throw, and they got him. He does that off balance throw off the right foot going to his left better than anybody in the league. You never see him shuffle his feet in a conventional form to get himself balanced. It's just always a little off balance flip like that. But it's always a perfect throw. Just remarkable balance. And strength combination and just pure athleticism. Nice play. Randy Wynn at 266. 46 RBIs, 9 for 25 against Marquis. He's got a couple of doubles and a couple of home runs against Marquis. With Pablo Sandoval to follow. One ball and one strike. It's pounding that outside corner with hard sinkers. Go 90 93 with the sink. He can also cut the fastball. He understands movement. On the ground is short. Tulowitzki again makes the play. 
So a strike out and a couple of ground balls and Zito will come back out. It's nothing nothing. from that season 2002 team bonds kent snow or reader and check out the answers tonight on the insurance giants post game live Dwayne and mike i don't think you guys can answer this you like them all too much yeah we do here's atkins as he takes the strike you could even add a few more to that list yes we can atkins at first tonight instead of helton atkins drives it into triples alley and Schultz will cut it off to keep it a single. First hit of the ball game. Well, fans, you can take a staycation right here in San Francisco. All you have to do is buy four tickets for just $75 and get $25 of gas from Chevron. That's right. Take a staycation with Chevron and the Giants this summer. For details, go to sfgiants.com and click tickets. Brad Hopp will hit with Atkins at first. So Zito allows the leadoff single to Atkins. First pitch is wide. Hop hitting 299, 18 home runs, 75 driven in. Only three hits lifetime against Zito, but one of those hits a home run. Line drive just past the diving Oribe. Scherholz has got a shot. They got him. Unbelievable. Atkins just apologized going back past Hoff. Well, Brad Hoff's thinking he's got a base hit to start his night, and Nature has says, not so fast. You've got to freeze on a line drive, and that stopped Garrett Atkins. And the ball got out to Nate Sherholz quickly, and with his arm and accuracy, he had a shot and nailed him. And Brad Hopp, instead of a, a single, he's got a big 0 for 1 going. How do you write that fielder's choice down? Pretty strange. Yeah. 9 6. Don't see that very often. Here's Spillbores, who takes a strike. Well, we said it. Nate Sherholz has a very, very Strong and accurate arm, and he loves to show it off. Nice high release, straight. Swing and a foul. It's nothing in two. Spillboards. Four for 19 against Zito. Blocked by 
Eli Whiteside, one and two. Great 0 2 pitch. As big a curveball as Zito has, and it's one of the bigger ones in the game. You get to an 0 2 count, and especially the right handed hitters, you throw that big curveball up there and try and bounce it on home plate. It's a tough pitch to lay off of because of the size of that breaking ball. I guess a little high in the eyes of Wally Bell. Wally Bell has a lower zone than what the Giants saw last night with Marty Foster. Last night, Marty Foster rings that, that strike up. Yep. Two balls, two strikes. Popped into right field for Nate Sherholtz. And Ian Stewart will come up. Stewart hitting 223, 19 home runs, 59 driven in. One for three last night with a couple of strikeouts. Does not have a hit against Zito and eight at bats. And a strike in its own one. On deck, Yarvit Torialba with Hop aboard at first, reaching on the fielder's choice. Outside. One ball and one strike. Bruce Bochy said that Benji Molina is available to come into the game if something were to happen to Eli Whiteside. The Giants were not so sure about that the last couple of games. But Molina is getting closer and closer to getting behind home plate. You remember the Giants have a, a scheduled day off on Monday. Freddie Chance, Freddie Sanchez Health wise, depending on how he feels, can go on a rehab on this next road trip. It's three and one to Stewart. So everybody's starting to come back together a little bit. Well, the Giants are kind of going to hold it together mode until you can get some some of your guys healthy back. Aaron Rowan out of the game tonight because of getting hit in the back last night by a fastball from Ubaldo Jimenez at about 98 miles per hour. He said that would hurt. He was stiff, not in the lineup tonight. I mean, it tells you all you need to know about Ubaldo Jimenez's fastball if Aaron Rowan misses playing time with it. Got him right on the left scapula. Three and two. Hop will go. And Stewart fought that off just to stay alive. This was Rowan getting hit last night. He thought for a second he got hit right on the ear flap. But it caught him right on the shoulder. And that's ball. And he thought he was going to get hit in the face. When he turned away from the ball, he thought he was going to hit him in the face. And if he doesn't turn the way he did, it probably would have hit him in the face. Out of play again. With hop on the move. Ubaldo Jimenez, people say, is the hardest thrower in the league consistently. Runner goes, got him. Four strikeouts for Zito. The Panda's going to lead things off. It's nothing, nothing.
two. Check out those numbers. Three time All Star MVP in the year 2000. And he's the all time major league home run leader for a guy that played second base. Just introduced here at the yard. And he got a great ovation from our fans here at AT&T Park like we thought he would. And there he is, Jeff with his family. His Sandoval fouls him down the left field line and out of play. And there's the kid family. He has four children, three boys and a daughter, his wife, Dana. And that had to feel good for Jeff Kent to have his family hear that applause. Sandoval takes the strike. It's 0-2. The uh, young man sitting to his right is Caden, and uh, Caden is the youngest of the Kent kids, and it's his birthday today. He's six. I asked Dana, Jeff's wife of the four kids, which one was as stubborn as Jeff, and he said that would be Caden, the one sitting right next to him. <laughs> The one two to Sandoval Sandoval pops another one foul down the left field line. I wanted to say grumpy instead of stubborn stubborn was good but stubborn was better. And Jeff said the you know these kids they miss the ballpark. And this little guy didn't get a chance to spend a whole time at the ballpark. Because he was too little. The one two Sandoval high drive. Right field out of here. Into the pond for Sandoval. He's some home run number twenty one, and this one goes in the pond. And folks, he got every bit of this one. The 50th time that a San Francisco Giant has hit a ball into McCovey Cove. And you talk about lighting up a crowd. Wow. Here's Ishikawa, and Ishikawa takes a strike. 21 home runs now for Pablo Sandoval. You know, it's. No one, no one saw more home runs hit into the pond from the angle that Jeff Kent's at right now. The Jeff Kent is right by the on deck circle, and that's where he was on most of Bonds's home runs. Yeah, he was. That is a great view to see just a, a routine fly ball hit to right field, let alone one that goes in the water. Great seats down there. On the ground to second, it'll be Barmas making the play. Talk about power. This guy is 23 years old. They say you don't even get your power until you're 28. Now that's Panda Power. They recognize it. And a look from our splash camera. Splash. They almost got that woman. Here's Juan Arebe. All right. Big shift net. Arebe hitting 271. He's got a home run and a double lifetime against Marquis. Marquis doesn't give up a lot of home runs. Look out, it's 2 0. Oh. He's throwing 173 innings this season. And that's just the 12th time he's given one up. And that's remarkable when you consider where he plays his home field Coors field still a live field, especially the right field. Hit on the ground towards the hole and pass. Ian Stewart, who usually catches just about everything, and Arebe with a base hit. And here's Nate Sherholtz. So 
with Scherholtz. Stepping up with a rebate at first base. 0 for his last 18. And he takes down low. With that 0 for 18, it's dropped Scherholtz's average to 278. He's been around 300 all year. Well, his last at bat was against the Arizona Diamondbacks in a pinch hit roll. He hit a ball off of the pitcher, and it popped up in the air, and the third baseman caught it. And he's thinking, man, snake bit against the snakes. That may be an omen, and maybe things will start to change. And you have to think that way. Down low, 2 and 0. Oh. But coming out of a little funk always starts with getting a good pitch to hit. Well, he can look for something good to hit right here. It's two balls and no strikes. Well, that's how you take away a 2 0 advantage with nailing down a perfect location. Good hard sinker outside corner at the knees. Slowly hit. Barmas will make the play and on the play a rebate down to second. So with first base open, we'll see what Jim Tracy does with Whiteside. Whiteside last night went one for three. He scored a run. And he's done a nice job with Benji Molina on the shelf. Well, the pitcher like Marquis who can throw darts, it's unlikely he's going to make just a huge glaring mistake out over the middle plate. So I'm sure Tracy has a, a lot of trust in this guy's command. No balls in one strike. And there was your pitch out over the middle of the plate. Yeah, don't throw any high sinkers. <laughs> Oh, and one to white side. Tori Alba setting way, way off the plate. He may be doing that after the, the first pitch. Scoring first, the Giants, their best, fourth best in the, in the major leagues. Rockies 51 and 13, the best in the major leagues when they score first. Now it's two and one. Dodgers won today. They beat the Reds 11 to 4. Two and two. Well, that's how you're supposed to pitch a guy if you have a, an open base and a pitcher on deck. Just bust hard sliders down out of the strike zone. I hope he chases. And that slider that Markey has, I mean, it's one of the one of the better sliders I think in, in the National League. It's just such a consistent, hard, downward breaking slider. He's got excellent command with. So it's three and two. Fastball, maybe now the slider again to see if Whiteside will chase. Three balls, two strikes. And he got him to end the inning. Sandoval with the home run. He goes into the water. It's his 21st of the year, and it's bye bye, baby. One nothing, Giants.
<laughs> Jeff, easy, easy now. So we're going to talk a little bit about your day today, but first I want to talk about the introduction and the ovation. It had to be special for you. Yeah, I was crying down there. I was able to get through it this morning, uh, this afternoon with the wall ceremony, but uh, seeing some of the billboards and what you guys have talked about and the fans uh, uh, showing their respects, I was, I was teary eyed. It was awesome, and uh, a standing ovation, and, and your children and uh, your, your lovely wife, Dana, all got to, to hear it, and uh, that had to feel pretty good. It did. It, it did because of the love that I have out here uh, for these people that I played for for six years. Uh, this, this, was, this was an awesome experience. You guys shared it with me. You were here. Yeah. You knew. You got to see me in the background, knew how passionate I was about yeah. playing here. Uh, yeah. You guys got it, so uh, it was real about the love that I had here. Well, we knew it. We just wanted to make sure that even though you'd passed through a couple of other uniforms, that the people didn't actually think that that uh, you may have liked it someplace else better. <laughs> Let's put it that way. This was the ceremony this afternoon where the uh, where Jeff was put onto the Wall of Fame. The stash has two, hit the wall. One. So the the. Uh, there we it like is. the stash. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I don't. I don't have a problem with the stash. The stash is making a comeback. It was. Uh, it was a great experience. You know, my kids started school this week to get them on a plane and to come back out here to San Francisco, which was all three of them grew up here. Except my fourth was born uh, in Austin in the off season after I left. But uh, they all know this place. They love this place. They they love to come out here. And uh, my boy is, was six years old today. His birthday. All he want to do is walk through the locker room. Well, we were watching you with him down there, and, and he seems like he's asking a lot of questions. <laughs> yes, well, the one, the one's sitting on the edge of his seat wanting to know if that ball hit the splash and uh, the splash hit and when they're going to change it. And uh, Zito's curveball is working really good today, so he wanted to know what the heck he's doing uh, and why it was so hard for these guys to hit his curveball. And I told him I've done the same thing, so it was a good one. All right, let me ask you this. What do you miss? You know, when that national anthem was done, it was time for me to sit down in the seat and watch the game. That was hard to sit down. You know, when that bell rings, when the national anthem's played, you want to go play. And that's what I miss. Everything else before it and after it, I don't miss. But the game itself, I miss. You know, it always reminds you of that great story that Pete Rose had when he told the teammate, I always have a good game when I hear that song. <laughs> and yeah. he did. And he did. And, you know, and. That was really when I put my uh, my gloves on. Is when that game was, uh, when, when that song was uh, said and done. It uh, that that really brought a different life out of me. Here's Eric Young Jr. as he swings at that breaking ball that Jeff was talking about, and he misses, and it's no balls and one strike. And you know, we were talking, Sandoval hits one in the water. You're not that far from the on-deck circle. You saw that a few times from that spot. Well, I was I, as soon as he hit it, everybody behind me is going, oh, is it going to go? And I start clapping. I knew that ball was going out. <laughs> that boy uh, put everything he had in it. And I was telling my son, too, that that wasn't just one of those uh, get underneath the ball, pop fly home runs. That sucker uh, went out of there. And in reference to that, too, he said, well, it curved a little bit, Dad. And I said, okay, that's because he hit the hell out of this. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, he got both cheeks into that one. There's no question. <laughs> So it's one and two to Young. We're with Jeff Kent, who went on to the Wall of Fame this afternoon about 3.15 here at the ballpark, right out front of the ballpark. A very nice crowd that uh, attended the ceremonies, and uh, it was nice. It's one and two to Young. Can I pat you guys on the back if this boy doesn't get a hit? Sure. You guys are awesome. You know, I, I, I hate this to come up here and think the people are saying I'm going to uh, build you guys up and blow your heads up. Well, but you guys are awesome. That would be okay. You guys are great for the Giants fans and for the players. But let me tell you guys, you guys are good for baseball. You guys do an outstanding job. And it's amazing, too. You both were players. Usually you have a guy who can talk and a guy who can color. But you both were players, and you guys are fantastic. Well, that's very kind. Thank you. Did Thank I get you. you another MLB yeah. job on yeah. EA Sports or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'll work. Yeah. <laughs> We're in. You know, the one thing that uh, along those same lines is is I think that we we just try to make sure that we didn't forget how hard the game is. It's a hard game to play. As this is right at Ishikawa, and this is a double play. Awesome. So we're going to keep Jeff Ken here for another half inning. Barry Zito gets the double play, and it's one nothing Giants.
Zito, six for 42 with Marquis. Did you, uh, I'm trying to figure out if you would have faced Lincecum. Maybe yep. at the end of the the one seat now. Let me tell you, we were the luckiest team in, in, in the last couple of years uh, that I played. I never got to see him, never faced him, and uh, we our, as a team we never saw him. Yeah. So I didn't duck out of it. We just never saw him. Yeah. Well, no, no, we know you don't duck out. But I, I would have loved to have heard your impression of of uh, of what he looked like in the batter's box because he is just lit this town up. Can Zito beat it out? He will not. Well, let, me, let me tell you what he's got that I've been noticing on TV too. That that is going to make him uh, take him to the next level if his elbow can handle it. Is that changeup? Oh my gosh! Just like Jason Schmitz. Holy cow! And and Jason's that's changeup was the hardest pitch I ever had hit about Jason. And and if that, if his able was able to su sustain the, uh, the the trauma of throwing that changeup, you know it well. It unbelievable, yeah. unbelievable, unhittable. I mean, he's uh, he, the last time they had a little guy like that with a big leg kick was back in the 60s when Juan Marichal was here. And, and he reminds a lot of the hardcore Giants fans of Marichal. It's just the, the presence and the charisma around him, the stuff. You know, I, I saw him uh, in the tunnel yesterday. Uh, he kind of had his head down. And that's a foul ball. The uh, so, so we walked by each other, and uh, I understand why he's got that big hair. Because he's not very big at all. No, so his, the hair makes up for it. Got to get as much presence as he can out there, physical presence. Yeah. Plus, I think when he wets it and then he gets on the scale, he's a little heavier <laughs> that way. Because he's he's a, just a little guy. He is, and he's able to to uh, he's able to generate some velocity. We got stuff going out in the cove that these are all Matt Kane fans. Well, it's like BMX bikes. <laughs> Jeff, this is right up your alley here. What do we got it going is. out here? Yeah, they, they should put a, uh, a freestyle ramp right back there too. All oh, those guys are on that ship, yeah, that they're barge. On, they're on that barge out in uh, out in the cove. Well, that's another good uh, young uh, pitcher you've got is Kane too. He's he's a good kid. I've hit against him a bunch of times, and every time he leaves that uh, that breaking ball up, I'll get him. But uh, he's done an outstanding job of, of, of controlling his velocity and keeping that ball down. Now he's right up your alley too. Yes. Yeah. He's a guy you would be hanging with if you were teammates. I, I was really impressed uh, 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 hitting against him. He was a good man. Edgar Renteria to follow. Hey, that is a freestyle barge out there. I think it is. They've got freestyle ramps uh, the, the whole nine yards. Which we've seen a lot of things come into the cove, but this is a so first. That's the freestyle ramp up there? Yeah, that, that's the uh, ramp coming down. I, I can't tell if that's BMX or motocross. That, that might go both ways, but. Uh, it's amazing. You show up at the yard and you never know what we're going to get. Yeah. Those boys are set to do some uh, serious jumping back there. And as you guys alluded to in the ceremony this morning, motorcycle, no motorcycles. <laughs> Thanks. Yes, we, we know that. So what are you doing now? I'm, I'm, I got four kids and I'm trying to get on the same page as my wife because her and I have been on the wrong page because of baseball. She's, they've sacrificed. My family has so much for me. Uh, the motorcycle shops uh, involved in that, trying to trying to sell motorcycles in this economy, it's hard to do that. And uh, involved in a, a country club as well, out there in uh, in Austin, and and just loving my time, staying away from the game. Three two pitch to Velez, and he takes the walk. The Hall of Fame careers of some notable second basemen: Hornsby, Morgan, Sandberg. I got to be the best looking guy in there, don't I? <laughs> well, let's see. Let's go for mustaches. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I'm thinking we're looking pretty good in this deal right here. Uh, I, I, I know you don't want to talk about it, but I think we're looking pretty good in this. I thing. really thought about shaving it when I retired. But going home, I took the necklace off, so the necklace is gone. I thought about shaving the stash, but uh, I just couldn't do it. No. You can't do it. No. Every CHP officer in the country would be ticked off. <laughs> That gets me out of some tickets too, buddy. Let me yeah. tell you. Well, who didn't know that? <laughs> Throw the old. My dad's a retired cop, and this is a salute to you guys. And they they kind of yeah. turn it. They turn they turn it another cheek. It's good. I like that. It's good. Well, and uh, <laughs> you've been known to drive a little bit over the speed limit. No, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> That's not fair. On one wheel, you're talking That's about? Not, Come no, on. I, did, I did not. You can't go there. No. <laughs> we have it for 12 years. <laughs> One ball and none. It was kind of funny though. I was watching the 
I actually I think I was listening to uh, to some of your uh, interviews on KMBR as Velez goes swinging oh, a big run. chopper Perfect. and Velez is going to make third easily. So a nice piece of hitting. Yeah good call Boach. Well here's a flashback. Jeff Kent. This is a walk off May 3rd first year of the ballpark. <laughs> Turk Wendell. Let me tell you guys seeing some of the replays that you guys are going it, it is bringing back some emotions that uh, that I hadn't experienced in a long time. This, this is a special place. You had an incredible six year run here. You did. You did and, and. You know when you look back at it I like that. Yeah we, we're teammates at heart. <laughs> <laughs> you went off and, and it got very close to going to the World Series correct with Houston. We did uh, games going into game seven against uh, uh, St. Louis. Right. Uh, got beat by, you know, I had the walk off home run uh, in Houston. All we needed is win one more game and go into St. Louis and, and get walked off by Jim Edmonds on a home run. And then the game seven lose that too. And uh, came close. Yeah, we're not real fond of any of the game sixes that uh, that have come around our way is the hitter is Randy Wynn. And Renteria goes, and it's another hit and run. So Bruce Bochy said, "You know what? It's working. I'm going to keep doing it." Well, you know you're going to get ground balls from Jason Marquis, and, and you're just trying to move the middle infield around as best you can, try and create a hole. Randy Wynn, a good bat control guy, puts the ball in play. You know when you're really going to start having some fun is when, whether it's five years from now or, or ten, when this organization starts having a reunion for those good teams that you were on. And then you get to see all those guys again, the Ellis Perks and guys that you think you might not ever see again, but of course you will. You know, I was, I was signing an autograph for the fans earlier before the game, and I saw a picture of uh, Shinjo. <laughs> I forgot all yeah, about there's him a, as a teammate. Yeah, he was. <laughs> Slipped my mind. Oh, I never. It didn't even dawn on me. But you know what? Getting to see those guys on a non-competitive level. Uh, is is really going to be a, a, a great experience. You guys have had them, and, and not happened yet, and and that's going to be neat. It's going to be fun. It's 0-2 to Randy Wynn in a battle right now. Yeah, we had the 20th uh, reunion this year for the 1989 team. It was fantastic. Outside, you know, you go through something with a group of guys, and everybody, in order to get as far as you got, had to sacrifice something yeah. for everybody in that room, and those memories are not forgotten. And when you you strike up the the memories gathered all together again. It's there. It's it's a magical night. It's yeah. a magical weekend. weekend. It, it is. It is. You know, you sacrifice uh, physically on the field uh, to win. In the left center field, it's going to be Spillboards making the catch, tagging his Velez, and it's two nothing. And we don't ever take sacrifice flies for granted around here. Well, I don't know how he got that ball lifted. It looked like it was about eight inches off the ground. Not an easy assignment to try and get that thing airborne. You know, let me tell you, Randy Wynn playing against him was was one of the guys that was a uh, was a worker. He he worked the game. He played the game. You know, you need you need a runner moved over. He moves a runner. He works to move a runner. But by the guy, sacrifice fly. Uh, he, he was a he was a baseball in work all the time. That was our fourth quality drive of the game. Pablo Sandoval hitting the 50th splash hit. And he did that back in the second inning to lead things off. Ooh. Well, he takes a rip and he fouls this one back, and it's 0 1. He had another good pitch to hit. My boys are impressed with this kid, too. Well, they like his size. He's just a baby, and, you know, he physically, he's. At some point he's going to figure out how to eat and do all the right things to to get in perfect shape. Yeah. Well, you start to realize as a player that you can do some special things and then when you do those special things you make the sacrifices in your life to, to be consistent. And then you're not tired in September you yeah. you shy away from some of the injuries that you'll get and he'll do it. One and two. One thing he does, and he did it when he first came to the big leagues last year. He had the ability to square up every location. It's tough pitching to a guy like this. And he'll hit balls right on the screws, six inches off the ground, off the plate away. Shoulder height in on his hands. 
close. Or he was walking off the mound. He'll gain more patience too as he gets older. I don't. I don't doubt that. Uh, I don't doubt that his average is going to go way up. Well, that's a really close pitch. You're right. Two balls, two strikes. A bullet to right field. They've asked Sandoval not to run very hard because of his calf. So he said, All right, this is fun. I mean, we had a guy here that did that for 15 years. <laughs> and you might know who that is. Well, it's hard to back off, but you know, he's got a, a calf that it's injured. They need his bat in the lineup, and they're telling him go 50%, 60% max. Well, there's not a whole lot you got. You're, you're missing a couple big hitters, too, in your lineup right yeah. now. So you, you're, you're having to piece this together. And the coach is going to do his best job of that he can to, to piece this thing together to the end. By the way, we know the big fellow watches from time to time, so we don't want to get him too angry. <laughs> You guys were a pretty incredible one too. Yeah, punch. you were. It was fun. It you know, was the, fun to watch. The middle of the lineup uh, in the era that we played, even you know Rich Aurelia being a part of that, JT Snow too, a couple others that were a part of that. It was just a great group in the middle of the lineup where we loved to score runs. And uh, Barry was the best part of that lineup, no doubt. He was a, one of the best players that I'd ever played with, and uh, it just it just made it fun to play baseball when you're scoring runs. Ishikawa's got a chance to knock in a run. He bounced out to second in the second. So I'm going to foul with Stewart playing way off the, the bag at third. Renteria is jockeying quite a ways down the line. I always thought that that if that did anything, it distracted the hitter more than anybody else. Well, especially if you're hitting from the left side. I mean, you're definitely going to be able to see that guy coming down the line. Well, I hate to break the mood here, guys. Let me let me thank you before uh, before I exit here. I don't think I'm going to spend much time more time with you guys. You guys are awesome. I appreciate the the props that you've given me over my career, uh, the times that we shared on the airplanes and in the air uh, the hotels. You guys were awesome. Uh, Wait a minute. Was that an opposite field home run? Uh, the guy's got a little booty in the back. He can take it out that Look way. At that. that was awesome. You must have had your wallet in your back pocket that day. I, I wish you guys luck. Take well, care. Thank you. We think about you all the time. All right. I got my props and I'll stay till the last out. Ishikawa swings and misses. It's 0 and 2. Spend the night. Go home tomorrow. Yep, got uh, my daughter's missing the volleyball tryouts, and boy, she's all over me too. We got to bring the uh, coaches some Giardelli uh, chocolate just to butter them up. So That's a good move. <laughs> we Did she gotta, play? We got to get back. She does all right. She's taller than my wife at 13 years old. Ishikawa on the ground. This will end the inning, and this will give us a chance to say goodbye and thank you to Jeff Kim. Thank, thank you, partner. My friend. Thank you. You're a good man. Take care, guys.
Giants with a 2 nothing lead as we head to the fourth inning. And this is Clint Barmas who takes a breaking ball down low. So Jeff Kent. Coming by for an inning. Good stuff. Yeah, it's good to see him again. Barmas takes high 2 and 0. You know, in 1982 when I played with Pete Rose, the one thing that absolutely jumped out at me was how every at bat meant the world to him and he never phoned one in and I, I feel the same way about Kent same type of guy. He never ever phoned in and at bat. Just had too much respect for the game played hard. Played hard I mean, that's. That will go on his plaque at Cooperstown someday. Lead off single. For Barmas. Well, the Giants have a new ticket plan. It's called the 660 I'm in ticket plan, and you get the following for only $660. All the Giants games during the September stretch drive toward the playoffs, postseason ticket rights for seats in 2009, and a $360 deposit toward full season next 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 year in 2010. All you have to do is call 415-972-2298 if you're interested, or you can go to sfgiants.com to get your 660 I'm in ticket plan. Tulowitzki struck out in the first inning. So the barge is trying to get right into the code. That's amazing. That is amazing. Whose idea was that? Tulowitzki takes a strike. Rockies have three singles in this game. And all three have let off an inning. You see the number of double plays that Tulowitzki's hit into 19. That's fourth most in the league. And that's surprising because he can run. See how he's turned his game around. The first 49 games, he was slumping. And then all of a sudden, he changed his stance, got a little hitch. Hitch that he had used in the minor leagues. A little toe tap with the front foot. It kept his hips cocked, kept him gathered on his back foot. And all of a sudden, ba boom, the home run started happening. Two balls and a strike to Tulowitzki. Two nothing Giants. Now it's three and one. That's Atkins on deck. So you figure Tulowitzki is thinking that he's going to get a pretty good pitch to hit right here. Well, he should. And you might see Jim Tracy start the runner. And he gets the call on a belt tie strike, three and two. He'll cut fastball exactly where he wants to place it. Ball is more effective at the belt than it is at the knee. So now we'll keep an eye on Barmas. Out of play. Barmas was taking off, but he got a late break. Not only are they invading the cove, but now they're making noise. And now they're, they're starting to jump. I mean, the fans below us, they can't see it, but everybody in the upper deck are watching them both. Runner goes, swing and a miss. White side throw! He's done it again! Twice last night and now tonight. Well, again, the timing on this is just so perfect. All Juan Uribe had to do was catch the ball. A swing through strike on a 3 2 high hanging breaking ball. And Barmas, no chance. Boy, Eli Whiteside has done a number on the base stealing attempts from the Rockies. Fifth strikeout from Zito. All of a sudden, 
everything changes now. You get two outs and nobody out. And a breaking ball that misses. Atkins skies went into shallow center field. So shallow it's going to be a rebay, and that ends the inning. It stays 2 0. People joined forces, and tonight almost 600 people are here to honor Stephen Brady and Crook and Kipe. He's upstairs, hoping you guys would give him a shout out. Well, He's a huge Giants fan. Absolutely, is this is hit high to right field for Brad Hop, and Hop will put it away. Uh, normally, our our terrific stats guy Dan Martinez would be here, but Dan is part of those 600 that are here tonight. Pretty amazing support from your community. Tells you how special he was. Here's Nate Sherholt. Well, if, if Dan's there, I'm assuming that they're enjoying themselves very much so. The L1 to Sherholtz. Sherholtz. Bounced out 4 3 in the second. You hear Amor the Gamer talking about P Town? Oh, yeah. She's, like she's, like she's been there? <laughs> yeah. She's proud of Petaluma. Sherholtz rolls it foul. It's 1 and 2. Giants are running the second on the Sandoval splash home run. And then Randy Winn a sacrifice fly in the third. And a drive to right. And Sherholtz is going to dig into second with a double. Yeah, he's got to be pretty psyched about that one. And as things calm down here, we're going to ask our Aflac trivia Aflac. question. Question tonight 2000, Jeff Kent won the National League MVP award. Who finished second? I know that. Yes, we do. Whiteside struck out in the second. I got a question for you, too, partner. All right.
on to Tulowitzki. And Tulowitzki will throw out Whiteside, and Zeta will hit. Talking about Nate Sherholz, who had about an 0 for 18 goal before he had that base hit. After you've had an 0 for 18, what's it feel like to get the next hit? Well, the first thing you want to do is get the ball. <laughs> and you want to put it in your pocket because it's like your first big league hit. No, nah, it does. It just. A lot of times you feel like you got a good swing and you're just not getting hits. And it, that may be the case with me. Topped right back to Marquis. And that will end the inning. So Sherholtz left standing at second through four innings. It's 2 0 Giants. The top five with Ubaldo Jimenez. Uh, that's a pretty good staff right there. You take your chances with those five guys. Oh, yeah. And that's our Chevron unsurpassed performance. Zito with five strikeouts. He hasn't walked anybody. Hop, Spillbores, Stewart. Here in the fifth inning. And the first pitch is a fastball for a strike. Hop reached on a 9 6 fielder's choice. Hits a bullet right at Renteria. Well, Thumbs up that. for Hop tonight. Going to ask and answer our Aflac trivia question. The question tonight: In 2000, Jeff Kent won the National League MVP award. Who finished Aflac. second? Our survey said, "Well, Barry Bonds did." Kent, 392 votes to 279. This is pretty rare when you see guys, especially in the MVP, go one-two. Here's Bill Bores. Spillboards with a mighty swing and a foul. Nice catch. The old lefty brought his glove and he just impressed everybody in that front row. Yeah, picked it clean. <laughs> no balls in one strike. And our barge is departing. Well, that was a pretty impressive. Yeah, there was a nice visit. Stay. For an hour and a half, they had to go bring it back. So you can just check that in and check it right back out again. That's the darndest thing I've ever seen right there. And the tricks the guys were doing were just incredible. Wow! Doesn't one of them just have to end up in the water though? In a trick, just bring your wetsuit and let her fly. Come on! 
Don't give me any ideas. So you're thinking Brad Hopps having a rough night, huh? Yeah. Four stop. Unbelievable in the second inning. On the ground into the hole. Renteria. 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 Not in time. Don't know if Ishikawa's foot was off the bag or if he actually beat it. Well, with all your momentum going out in the left field, it's just a matter of whether or not you can get enough on the throw. Oh, man. Bang, bang. He was off the bag. It was. Let's see Renteria's reaction. He thought he had him. But uh, I agree with you, and I think that's what Chad Fairchild, the first base umpire, saw was that Ishikawa's foot came off the bag. So here's Ian Stewart and a breaking ball for a strike. Down low. Stewart struck out in the second. Spillbores has nine steals. He does not go. And there's a chopper foul, and it's one and two. Football's been a really good pitch for Zito tonight. You know, when I first got a chance to watch him. I didn't really know much other about Zito other than his big curveball and his slider. He gets as many strikeouts with his slider as he does his curveball with that. And there are times when he goes out there and he has all four pitches going, which is pretty much most of the time. He can strike you out with any one of the four pitches that he has. Yes, he can. He has so much to offer beyond that big curveball. It's not even funny. There's a slider. Started to go, but held up. It's two and two. That's a pretty good take right there. Sometimes you you make a pitch in a two-strike situation, you don't know how a guy can lay off, and that's one of those times. The Rockies see more pitches than any other team in the National League. They will work a count. They have good plate discipline up and down the lineup. Always bothered me when I was pitching, and you make a corner pitch, and an umpire watched volleyball turn away very quickly. And that little head turn right there is just telling you, you know what, that's close. Three and two. Skies it into right center field. And it'll be. Sherholtz in front of Velez. And these two guys got to figure it out. It'll definitely make you shake your head. But when you're moving a guy around as much as Velez, I mean, you expect there's going to be a few communication problems. Absolutely. And you can see he was yelling. Reaction from Zito. Let's go, get it together. Here's Tori Alba. A single for Tori Alba in the third. You're playing a good team. And you really, everything has to work. You have to communicate. You've got to hold runners on well. You've got to hit cutoff men. You've got to be able to. Take advantage of the of the fundamental at bats, the situational at bats. Everything has to click. You have to play good baseball. And as tightly as these games have been played, these last five games, the four in Colorado, the one last night, it's not going to be any different. The next five, this one, and the next four, that these two teams get together and play. And these really have been fun games to play in for the players' perspective. 
A lot of stake. And we've seen good baseball. Toriyama check swinger. It's going to be Zito. And Zito throws him out. And that ends the inning. Top of the order coming up. And it's Dave from Sacramento. The pitcher will shake off the catcher when he does not like the type of pitch call. Will the pitcher ever shake off because of location? Mikey. Well, you have to be careful with that. I mean, a lot of guys won't shake off. They just won't throw until they get the right sign. If you were to say, nod, yes, I want to throw it, and then shake, well, then you basically tipped your pitch. You do not ever give location for a breaking ball. You give location for only a fastball. And uh, you have to be careful how you shake your head, otherwise you tip that a fastball is coming. So basically, guys don't shake for the location. If a guy gives a catcher gives a pitcher a fastball, and you say okay, and if you and, and if he gives you a, a, a sign for the outside part of the plate, you just wait till the guy gives you the sign for the other side of the plate before you pitch. Chopper. Atkins flips to Marquis, and Velez is gone. Well, tomorrow is a Randy Johnson commemorative 300th win bobblehead day presented by Chevron Extra Mile Stores. The first 20,000 fans are coming tomorrow. You're going to get one of those bobbleheads. So get out here early because they will go fast. And if you want to get tickets, you go to sfgiants.com or you can call 1-877-4-SFG-TICKS. The Randy Johnson bobblehead is a good one. Renteria with a base hit in the third inning. Shortens up to bunt. And that pitch runs in. It's one ball and no strikes. I think for the most part, guys don't really shake that much. They just stay out there and they wait until the catcher gives them the sign they want. Once they get the sign they want, they go. Two and oh. So many different ways of tipping a pitch. You really have to be careful. And up here, guys are a little paranoid about it. Two and one. And as bad as tipping a pitch, tipping a location. Very high and fairly deep, and Spillbores puts it away. Two outs. If you had your choice of, of knowing pitch or location, which one would you prefer? Pitch. Pitch. Why? Well, I mean, I can.
cut the plate in half then if I want to get location. I got a pretty good chance of being 50% correct. Plus I, I know it's going to be a fastball. If that is indeed what someone has let me know as a strike is called to Randy Wynn. Randy Wynn rolls this one over and bounces it to Barmas. And a nice one, two, three inning for Jason Marquis. Here comes the sixth inning. Two nothing. Two nothing Giants as Zito will face Jason Marquis here in the sixth inning. And Marquis takes a strike. Marquis can hit a little bit. He had a sacrifice bunt in the third. Up the middle and over the bag and into center field. He was sitting on that breaking ball. Well, it is the Coors Light sixth inning. Now it's time for the Coors Light freeze cam, and we go back to a strike him out, throw him out. One on, nobody out. A swing and miss on a 3 2 slider, and you can see Tulowitzki almost falls in the way of Eli Whiteside. And through it all, he manages to get off a great throw. They get the out, and that is a strike him out, throw him out, and that is a Coors Light freeze cam brought to you by Frostbrew Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Here's Young. Young is struck out and he's lined into a double play. And he push bunts. Ishikawa is going to flip. And everybody's safe. And Ishikawa took too long. See what that is just a, a situation where Ishikawa doesn't quite yet know Eric Young and how much speed he has. And Eric Young could flat out go get him. One of the faster guys in this league. And you can see, bang, bang. I'm not sure they didn't get him. Very close play at first base. He beat it out. That is cooking. Here's Barmas. Barmas is one for two. And he will show bunt. And he will take a strike. We always talk about how weird an inning can get if the leadoff hitter is the pitcher. And he picks up a base hit. We had Eric Young from the right side. 3-8. Popped up. White side is going to catch it. That is a huge mistake from Barmas. And that is a bitter pill for Jim Tracy, the skipper of the Rockies, to swallow. Two 
Kulowitzki has struck out twice. See him bring the bat back. You've got to keep that back bat out there in front of your field of vision. As soon as you bring it back, you lose command of that bat head and you can pop that bunts up just like he did. Breaking ball is low and in to Tulowitzki. Not great numbers with Burns in scoring position. We mentioned too, he's hit in the 19 double plays this year. On the ground to Renteria. One. No. His Renteria had a little tough time getting it out of his glove. Fielder's choice for Tulowitzki. There's the regrip right there. And even as late as Juan Uribe gets the ball, he still tried to get the runner back with as much throw as he could put on. Just too much speed from Tulowitzki. He beat it out. He's got such a strong arm. So here's Atkins. Atkins now with two outs. First pitch high, one ball and no strikes. No runs, six hits, two left. For the Rockies, two runs, five hits, four left for the Giants. High again, and it's two and up. We mentioned earlier the Dodgers beat the Reds 11 to 4. I'll tell you one team right now I don't think anybody wants to play, and that's the Padres. Padres beat the Marlins again 7 to 4. Yeah, this is on the road they're doing this. The 2 0 pitch to Atkins is low, 3 and 0. And he will have the green line 3 0. Padres went into Atlanta 1 2 from the Braves. And you know what they're doing? They're swinging the bats. Yeah, they are. 3 0 to Atkins. And the walk. So now. Tulowitzki moves down to second. Dave Rigetti comes out. And Brad Hopp will be the hitter. Hopp, in his last at bat, had a good at bat. He lined out to Edgar Renteria. Well, and he hit a curveball, and it was a good curveball. He saw it well, stayed back on it, put a great swing on it. And only the Adam ball was what took away his at bat. Marquis, Tulowitzki, and Atkins. And Zito throws and a swing and a high fly ball to left. Randy Wynn doing the fly ball dance puts it away. Wow. A lot of wind up there, folks. And the Rockies leave them loaded.
down to their first half title. These guys are good. You want to check them out? Well, playoffs begin next Saturday at San Jose Municipal Stadium. Go check them out, guys. That's right. The future in San Jose. Now, the Giants minor leagues this year have had a fantastic year all across the board. Fresno Grizzlies, third place in the Pacific Coast League, 70 and 64. The Connecticut Defenders, a double-A affiliate, 77 and 53 in first place. San Jose Giants in first place. Augusta Green Jackets in second place. Salem Kaiser Volcanoes, first place. Arizona Giants, first place. Sandoval with a base hit. It's his third. And that puts him in first place in my book. Yes, Agantes is Saturday, September 12th. Come out and enjoy the Latin celebration at AT&T. Park honoring Hispanic Heritage Month. You get a free festival. It's from 3 to 6 in the Left Field Duel Plaza. You stick around. The Giants and Dodgers will play. And the Giants will wear their Higantes jerseys. For tickets, visit sfgiants.com. And the Giants are pretty tough in those jerseys at AT&T Park. Pretty tough. Like undefeated tough. Seven and oh. That's tough. Seven and oh. They found out though you just don't break out those Higantes jerseys in Milwaukee. Yeah. Right? Line drive, base hit. Sandoval will hustle into second after jogging a little bit, protecting that calf. He's always had a good opposite field approach. He stays locked in. Not a lot of of stride. Very good balance through his swing. Just go with the movement. And the movement from the sinker of Jason Marquis is going to run away from a hard lefty. Run away hard from the lefty, I should say. I thought you said it just fine. Good opposite field single. Here's Oribe. A single and a fly ball, and he shows bunt. Pulls the bat back and swings and misses. No balls in one strike. I don't know if anybody was buying that deep by Oribe. It just doesn't look like the bunting type. He doesn't. He really does not look like the bunting type. And a bullet! And that's a fair ball. Sandoval can take his time. He will score. Ishikawa is going to be held up. And it's a good thing. Is Arebe comes through and it's 3-0. There's nobody out. And they have a chance to go large. This thing just drops down and in, and he stays inside it and rakes it right past Ian Stewart. Had no chance. Just a bullet about four feet fair. And you needed something down the line for him to score. Remember, they told him, don't run any more than 50 or 60 percent. As long as he's blowing bubbles, he's okay. That's the way I look at it. Here's Sherholz with the infield in. Almost hit him on the front foot. And it's one ball and no strikes. If you're the Giants, you want Sherholz to do something here because you've got White side and a base open next, and then you got Zito. So this is the biggest at bat coming up right now. And it's one ball and one strike. Well, he's going to see that pitch again. If, if the count goes long enough, he will get tested down and in. But you see that pitch as a fastball. I mean, you look and say, well, how can a guy swing at that? Well, you think it's a fastball down and in. And by the time you commit yourself to it, it disappears. One and two. 
He's played by a fan down there with a glove. And it better start to get greased up. All right, let's check out our fan. Bring a glove, you get a ball. Not bad. <laughs> Side. Now, Metters goes down there. Maybe a decoy. I mean, Zito's throwing the ball extremely well. Extremely well. You got Whiteside on deck, so the decoy could be trying to get Whiteside some pitches to hit. You think that Jim Tracy could get deep again? Well, as long as Freddy Sanchez isn't standing out in the on deck circle. High and deep into right center field. Ishikawa is going to score. Aribe goes to third. Nice AB, Nate Sherholz. Indeed, and we do not take those good situational at bats for granted. And we will say that every time that a giant puts on a good at bat with a runner at third less than two outs. And he did that one with two strikes. And that's as good as a hit. Now Eli Whiteside will hit. And again the infield comes in. Chris Bochi tried the squeeze last night with Whiteside and it didn't work. And a bullet into center field. Young dies and it gets by him. And Whiteside is on the move. Whiteside is digging for three. He is going to be held up. And it's a triple. And it's also five to nothing. Just too many mistakes upstairs for Jason Marquis. Like a lot of sinker ballers, you got to have knee high command. And he has made a lot of mistakes up. And this is another one. But a nice, disciplined, compact swing. Looking for something up that he can get in the air, and this is where you get lucky. Eric Young, very aggressive, and perhaps gambling at a time when he shouldn't have. And once it gets by Young, an easy score for Juan Uribe, and Pablo Sandoval is loving it. So here's Zito. And a pitch out thinking that the Giants might try another squeeze. That was one time you almost knew that Roger Craig was going to squeeze. Anytime that there was a triple and you were down the lineup, he'd take advantage of a little element of surprise when people were still distracted by the three base hit. Giants a three spot here in the sixth. There's a strike. It's two balls in one strike. Zito bounces it and Barmas will make the play. Nice play. And here's Velez. Velez walked and scored in the third. He's also struck out and he's bounced out. And he takes outside for a ball. He hadn't had too many good swings against Marquis.
Swinging a pop up. And putting it away is Bill Boys to end the inning. Giants score three times. Let's go to our Sportsnet Central Studio for this sports flash. Out here at AT&T Park, we're having a ball. You can get those hard-to-get premium tickets, and you can get them on StubHub.com, the official fan-to-fan -fan ticket marketplace of the Giants. StubHub's lineup of services makes it easy to score great seats to any game. You can get tickets right now on StubHub.com. StubHub. Here it's five to nothing. We just received from Michael King today our itinerary. For our trip to Philadelphia and Milwaukee. I, th I thought I swore I just ripped up the other one. Yeah. They come at you fast. Ryan Spillbores will lead it off. Five nothing Giants. Ryan Rollinger is now the th new third baseman as Sandoval is out of the game. Means the ground ball should be headed his way really fast. It's the way it works. Uh, he can play third base. He's got nice hands. The one one. Good pitch. One and two. He's made a lot of good pitches tonight. Got a piece of it. Now he knows he's had a real good curveball and he has used it so many times tonight and it has really been a good pitch for him. That curveball at times can be temperamental, but on certain nights when it clicks in, what a great weapon. Throw it any time. Follows this one back. Followed up with a nice slider. Slider's a flatter breaking ball. It's not as big. Place that thing nicely right up the the belt high location on the inside corner. Slowly hit. Zito will get to it. And Zito does the 360 and he throws him off. He does that play a lot. He does. Well, as big as his breaking ball is and as deceptive as his changeup is, a lot of guys will hit the top of the ball. Yeah. And when they do, this is what you get. Nice footwork and a strike right to Ishikawa. Good play. Ian Stewart with one out. Stewart lines this one and it's a knuckleball 
And it's going to hop in front of Eugenio Velez. Eugenio had no idea what that ball was doing. That thing slid about 20 feet from the left of the, to right. And, and, and from, from his perspective, Eugenio, watch this ball go to the right. I mean, it, it, Velez is lucky it just didn't get by him. And he's thinking right now, I really hope that doesn't happen again. Ever. Here's Tori Alba. Tori Alba takes outside for a ball that for Zito is pitch number 87. Zito at the belt. And Tori Alba takes low 2 0. Sergio Romo getting loose. There's a strike, two and one. Take it all the way. In tight three and one. Well, here's you take here's where you take advantage of your five nothing lead. And you put the pressure on the hitter. You know, as he so often will do, have a nice conversation with himself. On the ground, foul. He walked one. He walked Atkins in the sixth. That loaded the bases, and then on one pitch, he retired Brad Hop on a fly ball to left. And if you look at the flags, Mike, they, they're whipping pretty good. A lot of wind. Weather's changed right before our eyes. You see the last three starts at home against the, the Rockies. They've been fantastic. On the ground, Rollinger from his knees. Got him! And going in hard to second was Stewart, and Arebe hung on. Is he in one piece? Watch those knees, kid. He's got a little limp going. I'm good. He's fearless. Ryan Rollinger, nice play. Just spears it, and from his knees, a little underground shot. Oh boy, look at the right leg from Uribe. A lot of heat put on from Stewart. Get out of there. I don't know if he got spiked. I mean, he definitely takes a, a shot to the shin. Yeah, maybe more of a of a bruise than a than a twist. Well, just as long as it's not an ACL on the right leg. I saw you cringe. Yeah. Carlos Gonzalez is going to be the pinch hitter. But we figured that Rollinger was going to get involved somehow this inning. And we told you he's got good hands, and there was a good example of it. The numbers for Gonzalez. Remember when we were in Denver, he had cut himself while making dinner or having dinner. So he dropped the knife and he went to catch it. And it caused an injury where he had to have a stitch. And he could run and he could bunt and he could throw, but that's it. He couldn't swing the bat, but he's back. And a quick 0 2. Well, two pitches, two curveballs. And Gonzalez is not taking a swing. Big bouncer foul. He threw him another one.
Owen two. Got him. Zito six strikeout, and he's going to get an ovation that he should enjoy. The ball has got three hits tonight, including a big fly. Zito has been terrific. That's our McDonald's game summary. We have a new pitcher, and when it's time for a change, think speedy. Oil change and tune-up. Your oil change tune-up and smog experts. It's Joe Bimel, and those are his numbers. And Renteria on the ground. It's a foul ball past Ian Stewart. Find one of those guys that can give you a couple different looks at the fastball. A lot of, a lot of sink. He can cut it. Doesn't make many mistakes up. For the most part, his breaking balls and his the movement on his fastball, they're going to wind up down around the knees, and he can get a ground ball just about everything he throws at you. 6'3, 215 pounder. 33 year old. I'm a six year veteran. Bounced around a little bit. Been in Pittsburgh, Minnesota, Tampa Bay, the last several years with the Dodgers. This year started out at Washington, and now he's here in Colorado. Line drive, right field. It'll carry out to Hop. One out. Nice at bat from Renteria. Here's Randy Wynn, a big sacrifice fly for Randy Wynn in the third. First pitch strike. No run, seven hits for the Rockies, five run, nine hits for the Giants. One home run hit in the game, and that was. Pablo Sandoval went into the water in the second. Off the end of the bat foul, nothing in two. The 50th splash hit by the home team in the history of this ballpark. Took him 10 years to get there. <laughs> That's amazing. We thought when they were building this place, they'd have 50 by All Star break the first year. <laughs> the Kevin Elster theory? Yeah. 
Remember that game? Dodgers Giants open it up year 2000. Kevin Elster the shortstop of the Dodgers hit three home runs. There were six home runs in the game. We thought this is a band box. Goodness. Little did we know. Oh and two to win. On the ground to Lewitsky. Just in time. Check out Sportsnet Central tonight at 10:30. You can see it right here in Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. Enjoy Dave Benz and Mindy Bob. They will give you highlights of the Giants, Rockies, and the Angels A's games, as well as updates from the Niners and Raiders camp. Talk to you about the Niners game with the Dallas Cowboys. So here's Ryan Rollinger hitting in the spot where Pablo Sandoval was. Rollinger goes in to give the Panda a little time off that leg, and the first pitch is wide, 1 0. Is, you know, look up that scoreboard and he sees his teammates have got him five runs tonight. Rollinger 0 for 5 since he's been called up. And there is his line. He has been fantastic. Five runs, I mean, for him, that's like 15. It's like 25. It's, a, it's like 50. It's 100 runs for Barry Zito. I mean, and the Giants just have not gotten any support for Zito. Yeah, they're telling us in the truck nine times zero runs this year for Zito in nine of his starts. Zero. Well, I mean, this is his 27th start. So a third of his starts, they have not scored a run for him. And then add three more starts where the Giants just scored one run. So that's what 12 starts out of 26. My goodness. And the walk to Rollinger. Here's Ishikawa. Shikawa had a nice single in the six as he flipped the ball over the head of Tulowitzki. Eventually scored one of the three runs. <laughs> lefty against lefty. And Ishikawa pulls that one into the seats. I do not know how he hit that ball. I don't know either. I thought it was going to hit him. And then not only did I not know how he's going to hit it, how did his bat not blow up? <laughs> I think he hit it off of his the back of his right hand. <laughs> protected the bat. That could not have felt good. Oh and two. Well, Bible's no fool. He's going to go right back in there again. If a guy's going to swing at that pitch, pretty difficult to try and put the bat head and the sweet spot on that particular location. Into right center field. Young got a late break, but with his speed, he makes up for it, and that will end the inning. Giants strand one. Here comes the eighth inning. Five nothing. The Giants.
pregame live with myself and then stayed to sign autographs for all the fans waiting here. And I did ask him if we might see him sometime in the future in a giant uniform coaching or instructing. And he said maybe he might change his answer in about five years. But for right now, no. Guys? Velez wrestles that one. And that's out number one. Well, thanks, Amy. And we do hope that that there comes a time when Jeff Kent would feel comfortable showing up in spring training for a week, like many of the former players do. Okay. Another kind of funky spin. I don't know if that was a full on knuckleball, but the way it danced around out there and the route that he took, I don't know if it was a normal fly ball. Well, I know what I'd be thinking if I was Velez. Put me back at second, at least for a couple of more innings. <laughs> They say there's no bad ops in the outfield. I don't know about the last two. Yeah. Well, I agree with you in regards to Jeff Kent. I mean, I, I, he has too much to give back to the game, and he's going to want to give it back. You, know, you give it back to your kids as you raise them, but you know, when you played at the big league level, you know you want to be able to give knowledge that you've had. And, you, know, you play 17 years, you, you've learned a lot up here, and you want to give it back to somebody else. That's how. Two down. That's how Jeff Kent got his knowledge, and, and he will share it at some point in his life. Nice play by Rowan. Another example of soft hands. Do you remember the first ball ever hit to him in Houston? I do. And he almost threw it in the seats. <laughs> I do. He was a tad nervous. Well, he looks like he belongs here now. He really does. Backhander. And everybody that is associated with the minor leagues will tell you. What a difference it makes for a player when he gets to the big leagues after he's had a full year of success. In this case, for Rollinger in Triple A, you feel like you belong. I, I earned this right to to be out there right now. Well, that's the key. Uh, Connor Gillespie got up here last year and really didn't feel like he belonged here. He's gone down to San Jose and he's had a tremendous year at the A ball level. Now the next time Connor Gillespie gets up here, he's going to feel like he belongs. Absolutely. And it happened for Ryan Rollinger. Much different looking player now. He looks like, you know what? I'm, I'm good for this. And he's going to be here a while. One and two. Pitch number 103 for Zito. Affel Romo down the Giants pin. You know, I had to even look down the bullpen. His focus has been intense since the first pitch of this game. Outside, two and two. You know, we talked earlier about guys shaking off. If you watch Zito, he just stands out there and he waits until he gets the sign that he wants. And it's up to Eli Whiteside to keep suggesting pitches until he goes. You don't see him shake his head. He got him. Kulawitzki with the hat trick. Zito with seven strikeouts.
sights and sounds of what has happened here at the ballpark tonight. It's five nothing Giants. Matt Hurgis is the new pitcher facing Juan Arebe. And it's a strike and it's 0 1. With numbers for Hurgis. Shared time with the Indians and the Rockies. 25th time he's taken the ball. Just six walks and 28 and two thirds, 21 strikeouts. Those are good numbers. Good sinker, change up curveball. Chance to get to know Matt Hurges when he was a giant, and he was a good giant, good teammate. Nine year veteran. Hurge has been around a little bit. Dodgers, Montreal, San Diego, Giants, Arizona, Florida, and now the Rockies, Cleveland. Three and one, not a Uribe. Yeah, when it's all said and done, he will have put some pretty good time in. Yeah. Hey, played the playoffs, the World Series. Talk about the big league experience. He's had it. Yeah, I mean, he's one time closer for the Giants. On the ground towards the hole, Barmas will cut it off. Gone is Aribe, and here's Nate Sherholz. He'll be coming back out, folks. Well, this place would be disappointed if he didn't. He got a chance for a shutout. Sherholz, a double in the fourth to break a one for 19. And then a sacrifice fly in the six. On the ground, that's a fair ball. Atkins has it, and he will flip to her just covering. Nice play, Atkins. Now, yeah, Jonas, tomorrow it is the final game of this three game series and the final game of this homestand. It's going to be Matt Kane on the bump in the middle of the infield for the Giants. And it's going to be Jason Hamill for the Rockies. Giants pregame game live starts at 12 30. You'll see it right here at Comcast Sports in the Bay Area. Been fantastic series so far, and join us for Game Three. After tomorrow's game, the Giants will get on the plane and head to Philadelphia, where they will have a day off Monday and then start a six-game road trip. Three in Philadelphia, three in Milwaukee. So let me guess: Monday, Philadelphia, hit the the, the tourist spots or sleep? Which one? Sleep. No. Yeah. Here's Whiteside. Giants will probably get into Philadelphia tomorrow night between 2 and 3.30, somewhere in that slot. Oh, and one to Whiteside. Oh, and two to Whiteside. Whiteside had a triple in the sixth inning, a line drive in front of Eric Young. Young tried to come in and die for it and got by him. And a three bagger all the way. Got him on a high fastball, and we will go to the ninth. Zito will come out. It's 5 0 Giants.
five. So here he is facing Garrett Atkins with a lefty and a righty in the Giants bullpen. Trying to push for a shutout. The last complete game shutout he had, 2003. And trying to do it for the first time in a Giants uniform. And everybody in this place wants him to do it. The 1 0 pitch to Atkins is high 2 0. Slow your pace. Keep the ninth inning. At times you have a tendency to pick it up a bit because you want to see how that last chapter in the book's going to read. And then he gets the call. It's 2 and 1. Atkins is singled. He's popped out and he's walked. Bruce Suter used to say, you get to the ninth inning, man, enjoy it. Slowly hit. Zito again. This time he barehands it. Got him. Tell you what, the last couple of games, he's made some of the best plays. That I've seen a pitcher make. And this was not an easy one. He realized there was no time for the exchange, glove hand to bare hand, so it's going to have to be a bare hand play. And what sets this play up is the footwork. It's almost a circle dance on his back foot, and rifles a strike right to Ishikawa. Just a great play. Listen to this chant. Yeah, it, it took him two and a half years, but he's won him back. And it has been an amazing road to watch. When you think back as to where he was a year ago, April. High and foul and out of play. Brad Hop. 0 for 3. And Barry Zito's confidence was completely stripped down. And he has built it back brick by brick. With nothing more than just pure desire and hard work. It's been a great story. The very pitch. close. One ball and one strike. Fastball, knee high corner outside part of the plate, just a bit outside. Very deep to left. Randy Wynn looking up and it is gone. It's home run number 19 for Brad Hop. Bruce Bochy's thinking about it. And here he comes. And he's going to the bullpen. Well, this will be just another great ovation for Zito when he departs. And listen to this crowd. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change in tune up. Your oil change tune up and smog experts.
for a ball one and oh. Spillboards had an infield hit in the fifth. Zito tonight goes eight and a third, eight hits, one earned run, a walk, seven strikeouts. Swing and a miss, one ball and one strike. Romo did not work in the game yesterday. Yesterday was all Lincecum and Wilson. 28 strikeouts and 24 and two thirds. You'll get an assortment of breaking balls from Romo. Fastball will go 90 94 ish. More 90s than 94s. There's that breaking ball that's one and two. Romo did get the save on Tuesday. Remember the wild game where Arizona came back? To make it very close. Got him. Zito came out. Fans started to chant his name and he went up the steps. That was Bruce Bochy that went over and got him. Said, You've heard it. Go take your curtain call. And you don't see it happen very often. You don't. Start and pitch it. You don't. The Romo not to face Stewart. And a strike, and it's 0 and 1. One ball and one strike. Mike mentioned earlier about tomorrow. We'll have it for you right here on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. It'll be Matt Kane against Jason Hamill. So join us. It'll be the final game of this homestand. Obviously, the final game of the Rockies and Giants three game series. Out of play, one and two. He was hanging in there, although clearly more comfortable pitching than watching. Not easy to watch a game you just come out of. Zito's last eight starts, 1.80 ERA. Tried the wraparound, two and two. You get everybody up on their feet, and then you're a strike away from ending the ball game. You can't help but think strikeout if you're a pitcher. And a base hit to left field, off the bat of Ian Stewart. So the inning is extended for your Vitor Alba. And a nice at bat from Stewart. I mean, you're down to your last strike. You get everybody in the ballpark on their feet. I mean, you're turning back a lot of energy. Seth Smith is on deck with Tori Alba at the plate. High one ball and no strikes. Many standing, a sellout tonight, over 41,000. Expecting the same tomorrow. Pretty close to the same pitch, and the count is even. One ball and one strike. Identical. I guess the first one sounded like a ball. A 
up high, two and one. Wilson joins Athel. Line drive, that's going to be a base hit. Toriaba will reach to third, goes Smith and or uh, Stewart, and now Seth Smith is coming up. And uh, Jeremy Affeld is up and ready to go, and he is called for Affeld. So we have a pitching change when it's time for a change. Think Speedy Oil Change and Tune Up, your oil change tune up and smog experts. Couple of singles, putting runners at first and third. And the importance of this at bat is the tying run is still in the on deck circle. There's the numbers for Affelt. And he's going up against a guy that has terrific numbers as a pinch hitter. Maybe the best in the league. Maybe the best in both leagues. And a strike. Smith is 15 for 32 as a pinch hitter with a home run and 10 RBIs. Make sure holds his second. Home and two. Bang, bang. Quick 0 2. That gets away from Whiteside and it moves up towards the third base bag. Consequently, Stewart has nowhere to go, down by four. It'll be a wild pitch as Tori Alba moves to second. One and two to Smith. Two and two. That's a pretty good take right there. I think Jeremy Athel is thinking the same thing. Got a two strike for Tech mode. How do you take that pitch that close? Up the middle, and that'll be a base hit. 
both runs are going to score. It's now five to three, and the tying run will come up. So the magic of Seth Smith as a pinch hitter is still there. And Todd Helton is going to hit. Helton is going to hit for Eric Young. Well, Mark Grusbeck, assistant trainer for the Giants, going to come out and take a look at Affelt. Got him maybe on the inside of his left foot. Four hits now for the Rockies in the inning. Good two strike situation and we saw the Rockies do this a lot in Colorado. Where they would get two strikes and they would go right back up the middle now. This coach is coming in. It's going to be up to the closer. Brian Wilson. When it's time for a change, think speedy, oil change and tune up, your oil change tune up and smog experts. With Smith at first base and two outs. One ball and no strikes. 57th time that Brian Wilson has taken the ball. 31 saves and 37 opportunities. There's a strike. One ball and one strike. Toward 98 right through that outside part of the strike zone. It's not done well as a pinch hitter. And a base hit to left field. So Velez moves to left. Rowan went to center. Wynn moved to right. As Todd Helton goes the other way. And here's Clint Barmas, who's a great fastball hitter. Barmas, one for six lifetime against Wilson, and the one hit was a home run. Breaking ball, one ball and no strikes. This has got to be rough. If you're Barry Zito. Barry Zito started out the inning. One and oh to Barmas. And a strike. One ball and one strike. Brian Wilson, the roommate of Barry Zito. As you read the lips of Barry Zito saying, come on, Wheeze. One.
one and two. Fastball outside, fastball inside, and now he's got a one two advantage. And once again, they're on their feet here at ATT. Aaron Rowan underneath this one. And the Giants are one game back in the wild card with a win tonight. A little scary at the end, but what a job by that guy. And that guy is Barry Zito as he picks up 